Go ahead, say the mic is yours. Uh, you know, I think well, first and foremost, I just think that the commander did a disservice and not bringing back Eric, Eric the enemy um, as their coach, bringing him in as their coach. Um, I think you want a guy who's who's experienced multiple Super Bowls to lead your team and command your team to make sure that they can play at a high level, an extremely high level. And I understand the, the reports that that he was too hard on the players, that he was too demanding, that he had a lot of uh, I guess gravitas in the locker room, but. As a football player, that's the kind of coach you want. You want a guy who's going to keep you accountable. And when a locker room is saying the guy is too tough on them, maybe these are the guys who need to be held accountable the most because these are the guys that they're in a locker room. They're on a team that hasn't won anything, that hasn't accomplished anything since Kirk Cousins was their damn quarterback back in however long ago when Robert Griffin Jr. went went out. So I think it's um it's a little um horrible. And it leaves a bad. It, it just sucks to see that Eric Bieniemy, a guy who's won multiple Super Bowls, couldn't get a head coaching gig anywhere in the NFL. And I say all that to say that they believe that the UCLA made the best move, uh, was the best move for Eric Bieniemy because he gets to not only revitalize a program, he gets to bring up the next talents of the NFL to get them prepared for what they will experience in the NFL. Because players, I mean, organizations will keep. It will make every player accountable when things are not going right. When things are not going correct within that organization, players will be held accountable to the highest regard. And he has to make sure that he brings in the next batch of tough-skinned individuals into this uh, business that is relentless, that is unforgiving, and gives you very little praise when things are going right. And I think that's something that Eric Bieniemy could preach to these kids. He could teach them the X and O's. He could show them how to win, especially in UCLA, a, a program that hasn't had much um, uh, luck, I guess, in a sense, of bringing in many um, highly touted prospects into the NFL. So I think Eric Bieniemy has an opportunity to really change the program, to change the perspective of this program, and hopefully bring in the next big star. I mean, for me, I want to jump in here to answer this question. Do I think, you know, the move to go back to college or go to college to coach is a good move or not, UCLA? Um, time will tell. You know, I don't really like the move right now because I think it's moving backwards. But if it's moving backwards to move forward, then you know it's the slow grind, and I respect it. But um, no, I don't. I don't think I like. It. I like it for UCLA. You know, uh, obviously they get to grow their program that's been struggling the last couple of years under Chip Kelly with a guy who has NFL credentials. This guy won a Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes. So you know, college is always about trying to recruit. And you have that guy that can be out here going to people's, you know, homes and recruiting, you know, and you got Eric, imagine Eric B enemy in your living room, bro. You know? So um, I would say this. This is a very puzzling situation, Eric B enemy, because we thought a long time ago he would have had a job by now. Obviously, he won multiple championships with Patrick Mahomes as the offensive coordinator. And we thought he was one of the highly regarded guys that would have got a job by now, and it hasn't happened. Now, as I try to put my mystery glasses on, my FBI work, you know, I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint anything other than maybe Eric B. Enemy is just his own enemy. And the mm. reason why I bring that up is because mm. when you really think about it right now, like a lot of people tried to pull the race card and it had validity to it back in the day because it was a time where, you know, we wasn't hiring. Like, the NFL wasn't hiring African-Americans in the hierarchy positions, okay? Because back then, you had a lot of racist owners, and you probably still have racist owners, right? I don't think oh, yeah. those guys are going anywhere just because uh -huh. they wear a suit and tie. Right. Um, but the NFL has changed since that very point in time a couple of years ago, right? Gerard Mayo got a job. Um, Who else? Raheem Morris, African-American, got a job. Antonio Pierce got a job. Gerard Mayo and Antonio Pierce had no coaching experience prior to this season, okay? And they got jobs, right? You know, but I also think it's timing and luck that goes involved with that as well because, you know, Ty Bowles, he had a coaching stick with the Jets and it didn't work out. And then Bruce Arians stepped down and allowed him to coach a well-rounded team that already won a championship with Tom Brady on it and gave him a nice lob for the assists. Right, and Andy, we didn't do that for Eric Bieniemy. Though flirting with retirement for the last five years, he never really gave you know him a, a chance to shine. And I feel bad because Eric Bieniemy don't see it that way. 
he see it like the Chiefs did him uh, justice. And I think they could have done way more for him, especially Andy Reid, giving him more opportunities to call plays. You know, I'm not saying give up your job Clear. like Bruce Arians, but you could have helped the guy out a little bit more. But Andy Reid got this shiny toy and he's being greedy with that toy. He don't want to share that toy with anybody. It gets to the AFC Championship game. You called this guy to come and preach for your locker room to get y'all motivated when y'all hated this guy when he was on your team. Clear. Okay, when y'all criticized his aggressive approach, but you needed it when it mattered the most. Okay, <laughs> you don't hire this guy and bring him back. Like, Eric hey, enemy got to stop being his own enemy. Stop letting these people take advantage of you. Okay, no, there's no reason why I need to pep talk Kansas City. There's no reason. They got championship DNA. Why am I here? Right. Okay, you wanted to get out of their shadows. Why am I coming back if you're not going to offer me a job after my speech? Continue to take advantage of him and only bring him for motivational speeches to help that team win. No, he should be on the team. But now right. he got to go back to college. I don't believe that he left. I don't believe that report. Maybe I'm wrong. He knows it. He's there. He said that Washington didn't fire him. I don't believe that. I don't think they brought him back. Once again, his own enemy lying. Okay, lying? to make it look like to make it look like Washington didn't fire him when in all actuality they did. Because remember, he was on the staff for man long. The Steelers had an open vacancy and they hired a arithmetic Smith when they could have hired him. He was still on the team. Right. Okay. It wasn't until Dan Ken got the job, then he left. So stop lying. Stop trying to make the NFL look great here and look like the hero when they're doing you dirty. Clear. Okay. Stop yeah. it. Like I said, it's a disservice. I think the cam I did commander did a, a really poor job in letting this man go. I, I, I personally believe it. I just feel like it wasn't especially what he did with the offensive line. With the, it, it's just bad. I just I personally I don't, I don't agree with the, what the commanders did. But I, one more point though, and yeah. then cuz I'll pass it to you. Yep. Another thing, too, is I'm not sure if his coaching style works in today's NFL because you know the NFL has changed. You know, you got guys making a lot of money, you know, and that rah rah style. Remember, the Washington Commanders players came out during the summertime and they literally, I'm talking about grown men here, ran to their coach. I don't like how he's coaching me. He's tough. Like, really, grown men making money in a grown man sport like the NFL, running to their coach about Eric Bienemy. I don't like the way he's coaching me. He's too intense. So clearly we live in a softer generation right now. We live in a world where we have a lot of feminine energy going on. Okay. With all the respect, you know, I'll break it down to y'all real. Okay. Oh, That's what you want to get on this show. Play and play. I don't think this I mean, is the time for problem. him. I, I think they, I don't think the NFL wants that for whatever reason. Okay. Like I bet you a hundred dollars. Deion Sanders, coach prime will get a job at the NFL before Eric B enemy does, because I don't think the NFL wants no parts of Eric B enemy. Well, I mean, they don't say this coach just as tough. If you heard him, you heard him speak. Right. Yeah, but the moment, but, the moment but, he touched down also, Colorado, we told guys. Also, although he's rah rah, he more so enlightens his players. Like he's not like intense to the point where he's bullying them. Like he's rah rah, but he, but he, he has that you know, yo, you got this. That motivational type right. of approach as well. Got when he touched down in Colorado, he, he kicked the whole the whole team off. He basically, yo, I'm I'm, I'm bringing luggage. It's, it's a mission. So, y'all gotta go. Like, Eric like, enemy would knock you upside your head, bro. He looked like that type. <laughs> well, here's the thing, cousin. Here's the thing. Is John ba is John Harbaugh rah rah? He tough. John, he, he rah rah. Yeah, yeah. He rah -rah. How about Sean Payton? He rah rah. He tough, right? Yeah, yeah he, he called too. you out. Yeah. Denver, Denver was complaining early in the season, and they went to ownership and complained, but the ownership said he got the power, and then they started to play football. See how that worked? That's what happened. Cause he's tough too. He's an old school tough coach that came on the Bill Parcell. That's a tough dude. And he don't take nothing from nobody. But here is the thing with Eric Dien. They don't give him power. You said it first from Kansas City. Andy Reid didn't give him power. They give him nothing. They, they don't give him, him power. So, so here it is when he went to Washington with his credentials of championship DNA, he figured, I'm going to come in there with a little power because I actually won a championship. I know what it takes to win a championship. So he went in there with his rah-rah, and they didn't give him power. When those players ran to the coaches, the head coach told them, dial it back a little bit. See what I'm saying? They ain't going to do that to a Sean Payton. They ain't going to do that to a John Harbaugh. They ain't going to do that to a Jim Harbaugh. They're not going to do that. So let's be fair and clear. The NFL is going to pick and choose who they want to be tough on their players. That's and they ain't about picking and choosing not to like Eric the enemy. So when people bring up that race card, 
it might have something to it. You follow me? Because at the end of the day, from a historical perspective, although different owners, the Washington Redskins was the last team to have a black or African-American player on that team. Let's be fair and clear. They was once we called the Washington Redskins. I said the Redskins. Washington Redskins, now they're the commanders. All of these things come into play. Eric the enemy deserves to be a head coach. And if he's not worthy, we need to see him fail. Right? See, that's that, I need the proof. I need the proof that he can't be a head coach before because he got the potentials. He got he got better potentials than most people that's a head coach right now. Then Antonio, okay? but that's okay. what I'm so, saying, cuz so, of... so so I want to see him fail though. Like you give him the head coach position, and then oh my god, it, it was a horrible display. Moving right along. They never gave him an opportunity with championship. He won two championships in Kansas City, two Super Bowl championships. There is not an offensive coordinator in the history of this game with two championships under his belt, don't get one opportunity to be a head coach in the NFL. Please name this person. It is no, racist. I agree. Did you got to go back to college? But my what thing here is, because uh, I don't mean to fly in here, because I hit me, hit me, agree with you, right? You're making valid points about the power structure, right? But I also think it goes back in line with my point in my first lap about timing and luck, because you, you're right. He... Antonio Pierce, who's African American, don't have the credentials that Eric B. Enemy has, but yet he has a job, right? Gerard Mayo, okay. There's some people don't even know he's a former football player. This guy got no <laughs> coaching experience. He does. He's African American. He doesn't have the experience that or credentials and experience that Eric B. Enemy has, but yet he has a job because there was already a succession plan put in place by Robert Kraft to succeed the greatest coach of all time, Bill Belichick. Right, so gotcha. it's luck, it's it's timing. You can't tell me it, it didn't hurt him that he was on the Chiefs when you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes. However, with that being said, Matt Nagy did get a job, and he got another job back with Kansas City. Yo, so I, I, my I'm, thing here is I just don't understand, bro. I, yo, I, I, I feel like I'm walking listen, in circles. I hate to I go deep, cousin. I hate to go deep, but I'm going to have to piggyback off you. You've been deep all day. So I'm going yeah. deep, bro. I'm going deep like you right now. This sounds like a conspiracy, bro. This sounds like owners almost came collectively and was like, don't hire this dude because we didn't hire him last year or the year before, and now we hire him. Hire him now it looked like we was wrong. Because why are you going back to college, bro? Like, no, that, that is backwards. If I've never seen backwards before, and I know you said earlier, if he got to go back and take two steps forward, I don't know how he's going to land a head coaching job if he's not even a head coach in college. You understand know what I'm I saying? Another thing, too, because oh, the reason why I say he's his own enemy, too, is that I don't like the fact that he's pushing this thing under the rug, saying that he had job offers. You didn't have no job offers, bro. You would have took the job, bro. You took it. You would have took okay? it. I agree with you a thousand percent. It, Washington it, it, fired that, you. OK, you didn't leave. They fired you. If you want to highlight a situation, right, or if you know a situation is bad and you're being semi blackballed, then make that situation apparent to the public. Clear. Okay, so we can have an idea of how we should feel about this current situation. And I think that's why he's his own enemy. I'm not sure how it is, bro. I, I would tell you this. I don't understand, the, bro. It's the, a the lot. The only <laughs> reason why I can see him not calling out Kansas City and no disrespect, he should call out Kansas In my opinion, he he, that's the first thing he should be calling out is Kansas City. Yeah. He should be calling out Kansas City because Kansas City and Andy Reid, with the power of Andy Reid, he should have been sending notes to everybody. This is the next head coach. He's the next dude. Like, they do that for each other all the time. You know what I mean? So he should have been sending out that information like, this is that dude. Clearly, I don't think he did that. But let's be fair and clear. I don't think he's calling out Kansas City because I think he do feel he want to keep it good with them to the point when Andy Reid do retire and let's say they hire another head coach and it don't work well, maybe Patrick Holmes might say, well, go get Eric Danny. And maybe we want to keep that relationship open and why he gave him a rah-rah talk for a championship, which I don't understand. I've never heard of that before. In my That's life. what I'm saying. You I never heard of that back after he did a lot for your franchise and you basically you had to leave your shadow and you bring it back and don't give him a job. Like that's selfish to me. Like I just that's, can't get over I never that. heard of that, bro. Like I Andy Reid, first of all, that. to me, that's tampering. That's a whole other conversation. That, 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 right? Dude, that's I've tampering never, to me. I like I, I've <laughs> never heard this. Please, any sport, I've never heard of that. In my life. And Andy Reid, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to count your pockets. I'm not trying to, you know, really get up outside of my business here on this show. But my man, you won multiple championships, bro. 
why are you still here, bro? <laughs> like, wh why are you still coaching, bro? Especially after you flooded with, with time. I understand you got Patrick Mahomes and you, you might have ulterior motives where you're trying to pass, surpass Bill Belichick and be the greatest coach of all time. But my guy, Bruce Arians can step down and allow an African-American brother, Todd Bowles, to get another opportunity, okay? If he could do that, then he could do that. You could do that too, right? If other people could step down, Robert Kraft can have a succession plan put in place. You could work with the GM or owner and have a succession plan that involves Eric Bieniemy in it. So when you do retire, if you don't want to retire today, and you say, Lil, you stepping out of bounds, then okay, if I retire tomorrow, he's the guy. I, I don't feel they helped him out enough. You know, his team, the Chiefs in particular, that's where I'm really going. At. I don't care about the NFL, right? Because I think the NFL, you know, the hiring process this year speaks for itself. OK, multiple African-Americans were hired. Um, we can't forget that Brian Letwich, you know, turned down the Jaguars job a couple years ago that he would have been, you know, still in the league. You don't even know where this cat is right now. Probably working at Domino's. But um, at least with, uh, you know, the Chiefs here, I'm more concerned with the Chiefs. No, Why? You had the power. You're winning championships. There's a lot of power that you have. The NFL wanted you to win the championship, okay? Oh. And if Travis Kelsey, I'm getting down to down in my flow. If Travis <laughs> Kelsey, they could pay that brother $20 million to promote a jab, okay, on Pfizer's commercial, then he could have came out and talked in on the behalf of Eric B. Enemy. If you're talking on the behalf of Pfizer, Clear. okay, you could talk on the behalf of Eric B. Enemy. No, okay. No, all of them can though, cousin. You not just Travis Kelsey. Then oh, I'm picking on Travis Kelsey. I don't like that guy. So it is personal, cuz I'm picking on that dude. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Pfizer himself. Yeah, I'm coming after that behind. Okay, don't get me started, but I'm done. <laughs> Please like and subscribe for all the up to date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.